Shut up and sit down. Hello, everybody. I got a big you, big old warm welcome for everybody here to gosh dang 171 of Third Shift. I am, of course, one of your hosts, Mr. Eric. With me today is the Inglorious Bastard himself, Mr. Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Today is one of those kind of weird episodes. You know, a little bit of news, of course, for you on the Gearbox world. But mostly it's just going to be a little fun episode because next week is the Game Awards. 2019 and you know we always love to watch and pay attention have a great time with them see all the cool announcements see who won all the coolest games of the year and give our guesses which are always wrong so no we're right all the time do yeah. not do, don't twist it don't let okay. the facts get Sorry. in the way of a good story eric we are 100 percent right so you should definitely listen to every single pick write it down go to vegas lay money on these bad mm-hmm. boys because i guarantee you that What's this? Well, how, uh, untitled Goose Game? That's a spoiler. Hey, That's going to win spoiler. some awards. Shh, not winning anything, sucker. Shut up. You're Eric. so get wrong. Get, get, sh- get lost. Hey, well, you know, people tell me that all the time, Matt, but I never do. I stick around and annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Very true. So without further ado, we're going to jump into what our weeks were like before we get along with this whole fun, happy episode. Matt, what was your week like? It was a fantastic week because it was Thanksgiving week. I've been gorging myself on leftovers every single day, and it makes me happy and it makes me smile. I had some for lunch at work today. I was like, oh, man, mm, Thanksgiving at work. Ah, it's, it's like the best of both worlds, except not. But I guess lunchtime is the best time at work. So, yeah, it, it was. I was right. Look, mm-hmm. I was, I'm good. So aside from Thanksgiving sense. fun, went and saw Knives Out. Pretty fun, like, murder mystery type type movie and i'm glad i won't spoil anything but i'm glad it went the way that it did and if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about and i can't say anything other than that yeah but, you uh, can't I, spoil I, this movie no yeah i just want to say to howard yeah i did figure it out because i am smart exactly like i told you so, so sorry about your damn luck buddy i don't he said he was very confused and didn't know what was going on and he was so surprised and i went i'll probably get it that's he Howard, went, though. Huh? That's just classic went, Howard. <laughs> and I went, because I'm smart. And he went, come on, man. <laughs> hey, you know, what can I say, Howard? What can I say? The egotistical Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, on the video game front, been playing some Control. Got in a few hours of it on Tuesday because I didn't get to go to work on Tuesday. I had something else I'm going to talk about that was a lot of fun. Been playing more Control, having a lot of fun with that. Of course, been streaming Yakuza 3 Remastered over on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash thirdshiftme. Oh, you, if you were there, you caught me. Uh, it was a Black Friday two-for-one special. Had two streams to the price of one on Friday. Oh, yeah. Had my buddy Uncle Tusky in the stream having a grand old time in the, for that morning stream. That was pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, that's, then I think I don't think I've been playing anything else. Just kind of dabbling back and forth here and there and that stuff. But Tuesday... It's a yearly tradition. It's Giving Tuesday. Went to the Williamson Theater. They had professional readings of six plays all in a row. Twelve hours of plays that day. I sat there for every goddamn one of them, and it was amazing. It was great. I will say the I won't. You know, I could go into every single one and say, "Oh man, this one was good and that one was good." Don't shake your head at me, Eric. Mm-hmm. I do what I want. It's no, my you don't. show. No, you don't. No, you don't. You were just talking to me. I don't want this <laughs> show to be no four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> that's called put that's called a bit it's a bit for the pre-show don't at me eric oh uh, man it d- d- doesn't work as well but but I, I will just condense it and say that it's it's always interesting because like the i've done this for the past three years now and i feel like every time the third play that they do is always the one i'm most interested in and has like the biggest heaviest like darkest themes so every time that one's done I, I got like I'm like sweating. I'm like out of breath. I'm like, whew, I need to I need to go cool down. I need to just like relax. And then they're like, all right, it's time for play number four. Come on in. And I'm like, ah, well, okay, well, I can't get into it as much. But then I get back into it and play five, and it's pretty cool. So, and I will say this was this was the time that every single one of these plays is done by like professional actors, and they've got like. You know, they read it, but they don't act it, except they do act it. Because this is the one time I've got a real 
actual like a- acting like I don't know how to describe it. This is the one time I've gotten like a really good feel for like how amazing some people are at acting. Because, I mean, I go see plays and shows all the time, and you see it up on stage. I'm like, oh, wow, great acting. But you don't ever see them in between. You don't see those people playing other characters. But I did hear one of the actresses was in three different readings. And you could, like, she herself changed from play to play. Like, she, you know, was dressed the same because they, you know, it was casually sit down and read the play and act it out. But, like, her whole body... Me- body language her whole demeanor like the way her she even like held her head was different in each one like in one she plays like a a person who's got cancer and she's like a an uptight kind of stuffy character so she was always like you got that vibe just from looking at her before she even said a word that was the character then in the next one she was a more casual person but then had an alternate persona that she played on tv she was like a you know, like a like an Elvira type host, kind of uh-huh. like saucy and hoo 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 when she was on camera, and so she like totally flowed into that character. And when she was off camera in the play, she like morphed back into the normal person. And then in the third play, she was a totally different character who then also had to do all this other crazy stuff. And it was like every time, every play she was in, she was that character. Like she literally. With no costume changes, I mean, her, her dialect changed a little bit from character to character, but just her whole, like, persona, she literally changed into that character. And I was like, I was blown away. I was like, holy shit, you're my new favorite actress. This is amazing. <laughs> and I've never, you know, like I said, any play you see, you just see Aladdin up on stage or or, or you see Javert, and it's just, he's or the Phantom of the Opera, and they're uh-huh. just that. But they don't go from the Phantom of the Opera to Javert to Aladdin. But no. she did. And it was just like, I, I can't describe it. It was like three different people were sitting there, but it was the same person. It was it was f***ing awesome. It was great. It was crazy. So props to that actress. Props to Williamson Theater because it's the greatest thing. I love when they do this. It's my favorite day of the year. I just go and enjoy awesome plays and sit around with a lot of old people. And that was my week. How was your week, Eric? Hey, my week was pretty good because, as you said, it was Turkey Day. So I go over to the family's house, and I'm chilling like a villain. And we have a good time. They start talking on politics, this politics, that, and I'm just listening. I hop in for half a second, and then go, Nah, I don't want to talk about that. So mm-hmm. I start talking with another relative about video games, but uh, they typically, you know, revolve around the same story lines and so after a while you're like oh, okay you're getting back mm-hmm. into you know territory we've already covered on a previous family get together yeah. so after that you know all right done with that conversation let's hop back in see what the family's all doing oh they're yeah, okay now they're talking about uh, enslavement of the country okay yep no all right well i'm gonna hop out of this conversation again i'm gonna wander around eat food da, 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 see what the kids mm-hmm. are doing okay look kids are happy it's a good, it was your typical Thanksgiving, you know, for yeah. me anyway, the way it usually goes for us. And the reason I tell you all these little details is because on my timeline and Twitter, all the people are always talking about, oh, Thanksgiving was so awesome. Oh man, we were all, we busted out the whiskey and we were all sharing shots and telling stories and kumbaya and da 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 da. And I'm like, I have never once had a drink of alcohol on Thanksgiving. I have Just no make it idea. Happen, Eric. What Create that, that reality like. for yourself. But I'm not allowed to because of their religious beliefs. There's no alcohol allowed. So. Well, Uncle Eric's flask makes it allowed. You know what? Uncle Eric's flask is impervious to all rules, laws, regulations. So, mm-hmm. therefore, it's like it's like the ocean. It's like a no man's land. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're in <laughs> you're in international waters. International waters. You can't you can't take it away. You can't do nothing. Maybe that's what I'll do next year, but that's not the point. Me being drunk solo, you're just the weird, creepy uncle now who's want meandering around like an idiot. That's that no, how it should be. No, yeah. wants to get you. no, I don't want to be the weird, f- funky uncle who's everyone's just trying to avoid because he's drunk and sloppy all over. I want mm-hmm. what I hear about on Twitter with, 
a whole family just sharing shots and the kids are playing in the other room and the adults are in there laughing, talking, cards out, you know, whatever. Probably still politics and religious talk going because I don't know why, but that seems to be a staple of Thanksgiving. But even so, with some beers in me, maybe it'd be more entertaining than completely sober. Because at that point, maybe I'll start yelling and, and tell them they're idiots and, and, and actually arguing with them. And it's spur on all sorts of wonderful conversation. <laughs> no. You know, not it would go that way? No. Okay, fine. Never mind. Whatever. I'll just keep having the same Thanksgiving every year. It'll be like Groundhog's Day for all eternity. Yep. Yeah, well, well, anyways, it was fun. We did that, but I can't help but reminisce about a possibility of a different time and a different Thanksgiving. Maybe someday, you know, one of these years, I'll tell you all about it and it'll be great. But with that being said, didn't do anything else. Lived my life normal, nothing exciting happening. But on the game front, I've been playing World of Warcraft Classic. Got back into that a little bit. I want to hop into it more, but time is time it's been hard i keep going i should get on but then i play star wars jedi fallen order which is another one i've been playing having a great mm-hmm. time with but i'm being stubborn and i'm keeping it on hard and it's and it's hard so mm-hmm. surprise you know it's being a slow trek because one every time i get to a boss fight i'm stuck for two days trying to get the boss fight down and get hand over so i keep hitting a brick wall having to fight for two days through the brick wall then i have more fun through the next storyline and then i hit a brick wall <laughs> and i'm like eric just turn it to easy and enjoy the story no I, re- I refuse i won't do, do it. it i'm not gonna do it i'm not and <laughs> It, what you need to do is have Danny delete all that about about it being really hard and just say, oh, you know, I'm making it through on hard mode. It's pretty easy. So that way when Howard gets it, like he keeps talking about, and he's totally going to get it, then he will have to play it on hard because you just said it was easy. And then he will never get anywhere with it. And he'll give it to me like in four or five years. And be like, hey, uh-huh. can you stream this? And I'll be like, streaming technology is dead and also so am I. And he'll go, oh, man, oh, I just man. want to see the end of it. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Yeah, no, spoiler, he's, he already found out he got it for Christmas. Uh, no, so no. he is, he is, okay, you, it sounded like you were, he was just talking about he was going to want to get it or whatever. So. No, no, when no, he talks official. about actually playing it, mm-hmm. he's not going to play it. So it's fine. He's never even yeah. going to open it. It's going to stay in its cellophane wrapper for about a year and a half or two. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll prove you guys wrong. I played it for 15 minutes today. That's right. I turned it on and then jumping's hard. You gotta jump like these vines. It's like so small. The vines are tiny. <laughs> oh, I can't that's wait we to got hear a about one that. Star, that's why we got a one star review, Eric. Mm-hmm. It's from Howard. Probably. The one person I didn't expect, it's him. It's probably him. You're probably right. He probably, oh, they keep bugging us to go over there and give us stupid five star ratings. Oh, they don't do nothing to uh, me. This is mean to me. This <laughs> is <show. laughs> Or as somebody who is pissed because we always do the weekly and talk about our weeks, and some people they hate that man. They don't like it. They don't like it. And I'm what just we say, say them, right now, fuck them. That's, that's right. What I say. That's what we say. To them, fuck them. Go somewhere else. Go run into a pond full of alligators and get eaten. Thank you. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, good luck finding any podcast where hosts don't do that. Exactly. That's half of. E- that's literally half of every podcast I've ever listened to in my Damn, life. Skip it, this skip. is only like a fifth. So mm-hmm. come on. <laughs> So, with that being said, we did the Star Wars, we did the World of Warcraft Classic. What else have we been doing? Pretty much, that's it. I got a little bit of Destiny in, but you guys know the story on that. I always do a little bit of Destiny, but nothing ever big. So I'm not going to talk about, about that. Shit. That's Stop right. No one, Destiny. nobody wants to hear. Destiny's it. over. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Probably am. Doesn't matter. I beat Persona 4 Golden, but I've already talked about that. I can't remember if that was all last week or a little bit into this week because I gave it back on Thanksgiving. So it's all confused and bungled in my head. I think it was Wednesday. I had it yeah. already done. Yep. So never mind, yeah. everybody. You heard the story. Therefore, I feel like there's. I feel like there is something else you did, though. I know. I now really that you said it. I'm like, man, he's got some kind of story. I do. I can't remember it. Though. I know. It's crazy. I have something crazy. I did. But anyways, you know what? We're well, you running a candle. Long the you bought a candle. That was pretty nuts. That's not. I'm not telling the story about my. Do you coals. think I would buy a candle? <laughs> do you think I would Eric, buy a candle? what is you wrong idiot? with you? I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Anywho, 
my week was pretty humdrum, but hey, you know what? I had a good time. I loved all the days off. As I always say, when you have those days off, you really feel free and you feel like mm-hmm. life's cool and great. And then you go back to work and you realize that life's not cool and great, but you wish it was. You wish you could mm-hmm. be like you was when you had the days off. Yeah. So it makes you start to ponder life in general in a higher, you know, in a higher realm. Mm-hmm. But then once work gets back into your core again, you don't. You just put your blinders back on and meander through life. It's great. Your soul just leaks back out. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, yeah. Okay. I remember yeah. what it was to not have this in my body anymore. Exactly. And with anybody with normal jobs out there, you know what we're talking about. If you got your dream job, well, good for you. I appreciate it. I'm happy for you. But, man. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> so that was us individually this week. Together as a team this week, we did absolutely nothing. Nope. Because there wasn't a Talented Tuesday. There wasn't an IG2G, but there will be one next week. IG2G episode 68. Say it with me, boys and girls. I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm pretty sure about one or two that I'm going to be talking about. Hell yeah. There we go. That's how we do it. So stick around for that. And, of course, stick around for my favorite part of the show. It's your favorite part of the show, too. I know it is, boys and girls out there. Ladies and gents, children of all ages, dogs, cats, everybody. We got shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands the pre-sequel and Borderlands 3. So hit up the Twitter, the Red, the forums, the Instagram. Hit up your preferred shift code provider and get yourself some free loot, except for the Borderlands 3 keys are already expired because they expired like two days ago. But hey, look, the, you just just get the pre-sequel ones. Just go install it again, boot it back up, go, how do I, where's the shift code thing? Get it in, and then when you play it again, never, you'll have like a million shift codes. It'll be great. It will be great. So make sure you get over there and get those shift codes done, and always pay attention to old Randy Pitchford and his wily little antics with those wonderful keys he gives out. I've gotten a couple of them, but I've also missed a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sad because I think I missed both of the three key ones. Yeah, I definitely did. I kept going, Eric, hop on and grab them up, and then just whirlwind of life and things, and then I'm like, it's been three days. Oh, I forgot the keys. No. You know, literally ever since we talked about, hey, you know, maybe if we just go on the ship, jack it up to Mayhem 3 and open a case, maybe the loot will be better. Ever since we said that, I have not opened a single loot or gotten a single key or done anything. Gosh dang it, man. Come on. I See, I, however, at least have gotten a couple of them. If like okay. Sometimes when I'm on playing and then I check the Twitter on my other screen, I see it and I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah. I push pause and I go grab it. But anytime yeah. I see him while I'm at work or something, it's doomed. I, I always forget and then end up doing whatever I'm doing that day. Even mm-hmm. if I play Borderlands that evening, I don't remember. It, it's yeah. yeah, it's like just some weird vortex at work where I'm just like information in, information out, information in, information out. <laughs> and that's the same for me. I'm sitting there idle. I'm like, hmm, what can I do? Oh, let me check t- the show Twitter. Ah, retweet. I'm going to have to remember that later. Nope. Ah. <sighs> What's wrong with us? We gotta fix ourselves. Or, you know what? We gotta get some kind of weird clones to go ahead and get us our codes for us. You know what I'm that saying? Sounds good. Sit at our houses for us, play our games for us, get the codes for us. So that way we can just come home and reap all the benefits and rewards of being high level with the best stuff, but all the codes, all the keys, and they just get to play games all day. It's a win-win for both of us. See, I like this because then people wouldn't even know it would, it wouldn't be us. Because we just come in and be like, oh, yeah, I, I got a, uh, a Malinois Super Flacker, with a, you know, whatever the coolest, newest, hottest gun is. Uh-huh. I got one of those today. And it wouldn't even be a lie because it'd be a clone. So technically, exactly. I did you, get it. You did get it. And mm-hmm. I, myself, now am playing with it. So both, I, I got it in every way possible. Yeah. And then the best part of this whole scenario is being what our jobs are, you could teach your clone to just do your job. And then you could stay home and play video games all day, and your clone could start going to work for you. Well, see, this this is perfect, because if anybody knows me, I burn out on whatever it is I'm doing all the time. So my clone and I, we'd be the same, so he would have the same issue. I'd be like, dude, I, I need to get out of the house more. You, I'm going to go to work for a week if you sit here and do the games for a week. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. I'm sick of this place. And we'd go, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It'd be like living like half a year down in Florida and half the year up here. Mm-hmm. That that would be it. It basically just be that. It's awesome. I would just be worried my my clone doesn't have the same ability and, and you know to stop what it's thinking and then what it should or shouldn't do. So maybe it would go to work and after a while it would develop the same problems. 
Yeah. But instead true. of not doing anything about it, it would do something about it. And then, you know, how, how do you explain that away? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, going well, to work. No. <laughs> what are you doing here? You were fired yesterday. In fact, the police are searching for you. No, no, dang it, clone Eric. What'd you do? Well, see, I was gonna say in the in the clone making machine, maybe you turn the dial down so it's yeah, a little, ramp it down a little little re- recessed. But then yeah. that doesn't really work, especially in my like for me. Hey, can you fix this? I don't know. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm just as smart as you, man. Oh, uh, that, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> At least you wouldn't get fired because you'd just be like everybody else. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, Everyone man. would probably like me a lot more. Oh, That's true. Boy. Oh, beach hole, man. What a tangent we went on. We need to get away from the tangent. You said no four-hour episode. You said no four-hour episode. I'm trying to make episode. this half, oh, the whole gosh. half of the show, just like we this promised is terrible. earlier. No, I refuse. We're done with it. We're done. <laughs> We're moving on to the freaking gearbox. They had themselves a wonderful little time having turkey day, but they still managed to do a little hot fix for us yep. and got a bunch of weird little things fixed up. But one big thing you need to know about, well, there's two things, but one of them being that the bloody harvest is all over. Mm-hmm. It is fini. You can no longer go and talk to old stinkeroo and get yourself thrown into heck and find Captain Haunt and kill him. It's over. Sorry, everybody. No more ghosts in the world. Nothing's going on. Now, granted, that's true. Is Maurice still going to be there, though? Because I don't want him to go away. i got a cool dinosaur on my ship. Mm, I don't think so. I, I didn't check. Because it, it'd be pretty sad if it was just like, oh, not only can you not access the quest, but now your cool buddy's not there. You're right, because that would be sad. I mean, he should just stay on the ship, and then whenever a holiday's there, the- he just puts on the yeah. different holiday suit and, and goes, hey, I've got some more games to play. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I can't so. tell you then. I mean, it doesn't say in there that they took him away. It just said you can't access heck and stuff. So that's true. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe he's still there. I hope he's still there. You're right. He's a member of the team now. Besides, it would mm-hmm. make sense in the story that he's still there because he was brought on to do a little cross training, cross class, whatever. Yeah. So it would make sense. I'll bet he's still there. So you can still see him, but of course he can no longer help you with the Halloween event. And then one sad note, Matt. I gotta say, Turkey Day came and went, as we've already discussed. Mm. And they did not take our wonderful idea about having the Malamon troops around a Thanksgiving table and the Waddle Gobbler being there or anything of the nature. I was sad. That's true. But now, for a limited time, at least, I don't, it's not now, but it might be soon. I don't know. But they're going to allow you to feast on Maliwan troops because they said for a short time they're going to scale down the Maliwan Black Sight raid to actually scale with how many players you have. Mm-hmm. So if you're going in there solo, it'll actually be easy and possibly doable for you because you're a badass and you got all the cool guns and stuff. So, I mean, that's pretty cool for the people who don't have a four-man team or aren't badasses like you and me who could possibly even do it too, man. Now, you know, you can go in with a more reasonable challenge for whoever you're rolling in there with. Unless it's four people, in which case, screw you because you got all the friends. You beat it already. Just get it. Get out of here. This isn't for you. This is for me. That's right. Okay? This is for us scrub dubs all right? To go in there and have some fun with our friends and have it mm-hmm. scaled to where it's not... I don't want to say easy because I want it to be just easy, but doable right. without big problems. Just having fun. Drinking beers, going through, experiencing the content, damn it. <laughs> I want it to be you run away from phase two of the boss, you turn around, there's maybe four heavies instead mm-hmm. of like 12. Yeah. Because that was, and that it's was not too one much hit heavies. shots every time. That would be yeah, very yeah. nice. I, I would like that. So I look forward to it. I hope that once the event takes place, and it looks like it's going to be a New Year thing, because, of course, it's like, hey, roll in the New Year with us with this limited time event. Mm. Gearbox is known for pulling off these limited time things like this and then just making them permanent if they work out and everybody seems to like it. True. So I feel like this is probably a testing ground to see how the players react, if, if it's fun, not fun, liked, not liked. And if it is, they'll probably just implement it permanently. Mm-hmm. And to me, as we said pre-show... I think that makes sense because people don't have four friends. Yeah. I don't have four friends. So if I don't have four friends, I'm going to take a big guess and say there's a bunch of people out there that don't have four friends. Yeah. And you guys all know what I mean. You don't have four friends that play Borderlands 3. Obviously, I'm sure most people have four friends total somewhere, somehow. Hey, some people might not. That's true. But, but and, even and, so. You know, and there is the matchmaking in the game, but... 
I don't want. I don't want to share the glory with like three hanger rounders. You know. You yeah. Know no, is that what, I just don't like playing with random people uh, because people are generally evil and bad. So I don't like playing with them. Sorry. True. Yeah. And I have a short uh, a short fuse for tolerance, and mm. so after that goes. Tss- I just quit, and then I get angrier because I've just wasted however much time it was before they got my fuse down to nothing, and I, and I go oh, that, and then I don't want to play the game anymore, and then it all, all escalates into bad things. And then those people are angry with you because some scrub just dropped out when we finally got four freaking people for the Malawan Black site. What a scrub that they, oh, who who joined the game next time? Mahagaglong? No, we all left too. Yeah, See how screw you him. Or they send me mean messages, you know, and you get those messages like, too, hey, yeah. you mother blah, 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 you're a scrub, blah, 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 and you're like, oh. It could happen. Yeah, well, it has happened. <laughs> I speak from experience, not not from just possibilities. Jeez. <laughs> So I look forward to it. It'll make it so we can just play, have fun, no problems, easy peasy. Hopefully it sticks around forever because then all the ones going forward from here will be that, meaning we get to do all the content with no issues. Mm. And hey, speaking of having fun, playing things with no issues, uh, I don't think they announced the release date of the Moxie DLC before very, very recently So because we, we didn't talk about it last time. It's dropping on the 19th of December. So that's two weeks away, my friend. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be raiding Handsome Jack's Handsome Jackpot with Moxie and having a grand old time. Oh, I can't wait, dude. I'm super stoked about it. I, mm. I, I Just today, because they posted up a 13 minutes of gameplay, yeah. and I clicked on it. And no, then I, no. And then, no, then I unclicked immediately, and I went, I don't want to hear none of this. What? Exactly. Because I was like, well, for the show, I should watch it. And then I went, nope, we already said we don't got to do that. We said we're not doing yep. it. We did a poll, and people said no. And I jumped off. So I'm still 100% spoiler-free, except for quite literally the first nine seconds. And that's when I clicked it off. It was nine seconds. And then I I went, I'll just go watch the whole thing. No, no. It's going to go on. I can play it with you. (laughs) Hey, man, here's where she jumps. You know, when we do play out with that nine seconds, I'm like, so what's the game right here? (laughs) You can see Moxie. She's going to walk out, and like her boobs Mm -hmm. are going to jiggle and pull her head on. God damn it, Eric. You ruined it all. No. Exactly. No. So I did not watch that video, but you can go watch that video if you don't mind spoilers and just want to get hyped about the brand new thing coming on December 19th. But I'm going to stay re, uh, spoiler free and going blind, having a good time and laughing at all the fun jokes. Another thing you can have a good time with in the future is our buddy Andrew Bear, who works at Gearbox. He has got a GDC talk all lined up for GDC when that rolls around, talking all about the accessibility options that they put in Borderlands 3, things that made it, things that didn't, what worked, what didn't, how they decided, how that all went. So if you're interested in some behind-the-scenes stuff on accessibility options in Borderlands 3, keep your eye out for GDC and just be like, man, when's that coming? Oh, I can't wait to maybe get a YouTube stream of this talk eventually when that happens. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that. So, you know, that sounds pretty damn cool because... Mm. I love all that stuff, and you don't see it too much. It's one of those things that we've talked about before. I wish they'd get that rolling more with the devs and everybody coming out with all the cool background stuff on how they did this, how they did that. You know, they mm-hmm. had the artwork piece, and then they had um, oh, what's his name? He's done two or three now with uh, oh, the sound designer. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Joshua Davidson. But I, I want to see way more of that. I want to start seeing a lot of that, and I was hoping with the co-op couch they'd kind of really start deep diving in a lot of that. But uh, mm-hmm. I just, you know, they they went and pulled that back to once a month now. Instead of every yeah. week, so I was pretty sad to hear that news. But I understand they're busy developing more games, developing DLC. They can't just keep on mm-hmm. having people come and do a podcast slash Twitch let's play sort of thing for a couple hours. So of course, with all that being said, we will, as we always do, remind you that there were more in the hot fixes, more little wonderful things for you to check out. But we're not going to go ahead and state them all here because a lot of them are boring little weird things that are mm-hmm. maybe important to you. But if they are, you'd be in there reading them and figuring out yourself. A lot of them were like Zane stuff. Like, who plays Zane? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get out of here. That's the truth. <laughs> Flack pack for life. <laughs> I say pack. And now, speaking of things you play for life or don't play for life, we're going to move into the topic of the night, everybody. The Game Awards are upon us. The next time you hear an episode besides this one, you know what I'm saying? Next week's episode, <laughs> well, it's going to have been the Game Awards. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait a Do you want to shotgun something? 
<laughs> I did it. Shotgun that just, all to hell. Just Woo. blow up the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was too good. It's too good. Oh, it's too good. No, what we should do is we should just do the game of the year and be like, hey, that's it. Game of the year. See you later, guys. <laughs> See you later. It's a short so that episode. That way the weeks will literally be like 75% of the episode. It'll be even better. <laughs> no. There'll be oh. that. There'll be there'll be me leaving. Amanda coming down. I know, right? All that garbage Red in there. And oh, bl- <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'd give myself a one star for that one. I would too. I would. I would. <laughs> All right. Whew. The Game Awards are upon us. It's one of our favorite times of the year, as we mentioned at the very beginning of this episode. And as you all know or may not know, we love to go through and give our picks for all the different, uh, you know, categories, except for the esports, which we will be skipping, except for best esports game. Darn right. Because neither one of us cares that much about esports, in case you didn't know. Yeah. I look at esports player. I recognize one name out of there. I look at esports coach and I go, who? Well, what? What was what this guy? What's he supposed to be known for? I don't know. Uh, who, who Who's the best old man sitting on the sidelines? I don't know. But I do know the best esports game. I know it because I've known it forever. I've Before this was a category, I've known it. The best esports game. I'm not even going to go down the nominees because who cares? Because the only one that counts is League of Legends. League of Legends is the best esports game in the whole goddamn world. Don't at me on Twitter if you disagree with me because I'm right and you're wrong. I'll just block you. I'll block you on Twitter. Just like I blocked everybody who taught, who tweeted me about freaking Thanksgiving hams. Oh I blocked all your asses. You're all I'll gone. block you if you say League of Legends is not the best. Well, this will be awkward. Okay, here it comes. I'm getting the phone up right now. I picked Overwatch you, as the very best esports Shut game of the year. Here we go, Twitter. Oh, it's over. Yeah, block me, Matt, because you know how much I post. <laughs> You're, you're going to miss some exciting content on the Twitter. <laughs> well, but then you won't be able to like my tweets. And I, that's I true. I get a lot of likes. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Ooh, oh, gosh, man. that's well, a sacrifice you, you got to be willing to make there. You actually did like a wrestling slash the podcast related tweet. So I'll let, you, I'll let this one slide. I'm sliding. Okay, there you go. All right. So there you go. I'm picking Overwatch this year because that's the game I've played the most of. I've dabbled in League of Legends. I've dabbled in Fortnite. I've never touched. Well, I'm, we're not going to list them. We're not doing it. We said we weren't doing it. Eric, no, you na- I only naturally one keep trying. I don't know why uh-huh. I do it. I'm like, I'm a god problem. It's, I can't help it. So anyways, there you go. Overwatch for me. League of Legends for you. I don't know. I've put too much time into Overwatch. What can I say? That's the only category I think that's even nominated for anything that we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, it is. So actually. there you go. Overwatch. It's going to take it. And hey, I'll say, you know, if if somebody has to beat out League of Legends, it might as well be Overwatch, because like you said, I put in a million freaking hours. I still love the game. But League of Legends just has all the memories and weight of a thousand years of good nostalgia times, drunken screaming into a microphone. It's great. It's fun. Exactly. And I have the same memories with Overwatch. So for yeah. the same reasons, very noble reasons, mind you, we have picked who we did. We mm-hmm. will see who the victor is. I already know I lost. But that's fine. We probably both lost. <laughs> It'll be Fortnite. <laughs> that, you're who actually who, 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 who cares? No one cares. Jesus, no pizza. That's rude. We're a little lying, but you know, there you go. It's all part of the gimmick, you know. God. It's a bit. Don't add us. Yeah, that's right. Don't add us. Best multiplayer game. You know what? I, of course, went with Borderlands Three because mm-hmm. out of the list, I think that is the very best multiplayer game. That you could pick, I will give a shout out to, I know we're not going to talk extenuous about it, but I want to say Division 2, I still love that game and I wish it would have turned out different, but all of my friends who played it all burn out and didn't want to play, and the one that did, it was fine, but we couldn't keep doing anything because there wasn't enough of us, so it was like, I bowed out because I had to, and it stinks. But Borderlands 3, I can play solo, I can play with people, I can do whatever I want, the game's a gift that keeps on giving. We have so many memories with the old ones, and now we're going to make new mm. memories with this one. So, of course, it's going to be there on my best multiplayer game. Now, here's the part where I earn us another one-star review, because I agree Borderlands 3 is amazing and great, and I have fun playing it with my friends. But for me, the choice here is Tetris 99, because it's the only Royale-style game that I got into. Like you said, I could play it solo, I can play it with friends, I can play it solo or with 98 other people, and it basically works the same. It's, it's, I mean, there are some times when you get, you know, you get crushed early, but it just feels good 
to be playing Tetris, it looks good, it sounds good. When you get up into those teens and the pressure starts mounting, stuff, garbage blocks start coming in. You're starting to throw garbage blocks out on other people. You're doing that like quick scan of the of the screen to see what everyone else is doing, and then you're like, oh, shit. ah, I missed my thing. It's so good. It's I love it. I love Tetris 99. So even over Borderlands 3, I have to pick it just because this is the only category it's repped in. So Tetris 99, baby, I give you some love. Hey, I'll give you the props, man. I understand that you know some of these categories only have one nominee for the entire thing. So you got to mm. give love where love is due. And Tetris is a classic. I don't play it myself, but I respect Tetris. And of course, mm. as any human our age has, I've played a lot of it in the past. So oh, yeah. I get you. I got you. All right. Well, here's one I know you got basically no input in. Neither do I, really, but I'll make something up for half a second. Best mm-hmm. sports racing game, Matt. I, of course, I, I've i played all <laughs> these games because, of course. God, man, I love these types of games. And Crash Team Racing, Nitro Field, gets my vote. And it gets my vote for, eh, you know, one real reason. It's a game I truly want to play. So as you can yeah. imagine from what I just said, I have not played it. I have no experience with it. I have no experience with any of these racing games because I typically don't play racing games except for Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. But I hear nothing but awesome stuff about Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, and it's a kart racing game, so therefore mm-hmm. put one thing I do like in the racing genre in with what I've heard from all sorts of other individuals who have played the hell out of it, and you get something where I'm like, hey, you know what, out of these, that's the only one I would ever touch. So therefore, it gets my vote. Now, I'm so into this category that when I made up the list, I actually deleted it because I assume we were not talking about it. So I don't even know what See, is actually perfect. on the list. I know Crash Team Racing <laughs> is there, and I know FIFA, t- t- I feel FIFA, know FIFA 2020 is on there. And FIFA 20. So I'm going to say, FIFA, baby, I love soccer and I love Europe. Kicking a ball into a goal, it's the best. Getting drunk and doing like making like racist signs and doing racist chants because that's like the coolest thing that they do now that's I, whenever i'm on twitter and the sports thing it's like oh crowd people arrested for racist chants at the thing i'm like yeah great keep that up there you go fifa do it gosh bless matt you, you're just you know you're just being a pig here you're just picking the games that are gonna win you're not even picking what you actually like you're just picking games that are gonna win so you can look better than me at the end of this I know what's happening here. Yeah. That's that's always the strategy. Yes, that's what they. <laughs> that's what I do. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's the category I am not losing, and that's best strategy game. And hands down, mm. easy. It's going to be Fire Emblem Three Houses. I have watched tons of gameplay of this game. I've heard nothing but good on it. I hey, guess what? I got it for Christmas. Oh, I, I got to wait. Daffodil. I got to wait a couple weeks to play it. So no, I have not played it myself. But I have watched hours upon hours of gameplay of it, and of course I've read billions of reviews on it, because as I've talked about on the show and personally with Matt before, I don't want to get involved into another giant RPG, but I hear so many good things about this one, and I hear it's not as elaborate and ridiculous as 140 hours is with some of these Persona games. So therefore, it gets my vote because I hear nothing but greatness about it. I am super interested in playing it. In fact, like I said, I do already have it. I just got to wait till Christmas to play it. So there you go. Fire Emblem, three houses. Boom. Now for me, there's three games here I'm interested in playing. I haven't played a single one of these either. But the one that's going to get my vote is Total War Three Kingdoms because I've heard all the, the PC people, the PC master races, and the Total War fanboys say that this is an awesome, like, the best newest version of the series. And it's all about three kingdoms era, which I am all about dynasty warriors, romance of the three kingdoms. So if I was only going to play one ever in my whole life, it'd be total war three kingdoms. So that gets my vote, man. I want to be galloping across the battlefield with Guan Yu. Go for it. Guan Yu. Dang it, man. You son of a bitch. How are you going to betray fire emblem on this? I don't, I, I'm so disappointed in you. I'm 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 always cautious about the 3D fire emblems cuz they're always solid but they're never as good as the 2Ds or at least they don't appeal to me as much. Hmm. And I haven't watched as much of this one cuz I want to play it. So it's kind of like eh. And also also wanted to say right. Wargroove but both of those are mostly mm-hmm. Switch based so PC's more Yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, there you go, folks. Once again, we're split. We're split on everything. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. None of this is going in. Here, here's one. Here's the best one. Best family game, Matt. What do you know about that? Nothing, sucker. <laughs> so here we go. Now we're into some territory where I've played some of these games and rocked them out. And I will mm-hmm. say for this particular 
area, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's definitely getting my vote, and I think it's going to take the win anyway, because I've played tons of hours with Elaine sitting there, and of course Isabel as well, but you know Isabel mainly just jumps off cliffs and does nothing, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Playing with them, beating up the comp, having a good time, and then when I'm wanting to do something else, I have her sit next to me on the couch, and she plays on the handheld part of it, unlocking characters and getting the, uh, the, the, um, oh man, I'm forgetting the name of them. Whatever, she's like getting assist the, trophies? the little souls or whatever, yeah, the assist trophies and the, um, I don't know. Ah, man, spirits, I'm, I'm, spirits. there it is, the spirits, statues. for God's sakes, the spirits. She's getting the spirits for me in the other one. So I'm over here playing my game, she's sitting next to me doing that, and she goes, Daddy, look what I did, and I'm looking down, and go, all right, woo, and then I have her let me see it, and I play around her too, you know, with the new character, and then I give it back mm-hmm. to her, and she goes and does this more. It's easy peasy. That's exactly what it is when you're doing family time with gaming, is sitting with your family, playing some games, having some fun, bonding together through getting trophies, beating each other up, or beating the computer up, you know, while you're tag teaming them, etc. So, boom, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, you said easy peasy in that last big long sentence that you kind of rambled on with, mm-hmm. and I was trying to get a segue, but you just kept going. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, still going to take it back to easy peasy. I'm going to stick out my Yoshi tongue. Wah. And I'm going to grab that easy peasy, and I'm going to say Yoshi's Crafted World. I haven't played any of these games, but Yoshi's Crafted World is the one I'm actually interested in, just because of the graphics, the art style. From what I've heard, it is a simpler game, but it looks like nothing else out there. And I know easy games are good for kids, cute games are good for kids. Yoshi's Crafted World gets my vote. Just it's cute, and I want to play it. I want to, I want, I want to get the little squishy Yoshi amiibo, just because it's so cute, and just sit it right there. You're actually right on that. I've thought about it several times. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. I've seen it in the store a couple times, and I'm like, yeah. I should get that under the guise of giving it to the girls, but then I'll convince the girls that they want to just set it down here with the rest of my little gaming artifacts, and it'll be it's perfect. like slightly oversized, mm-hmm. so it looks it would look right at home with all this other stuff. Exactly. It's perfect. So I'm with you. I, I respect that vote, but I, mm-hmm. I still think mine's better. But, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Next Time week, we'll know. <laughs> all right. Best fighting game, Matt. Woo! What do you think? What do you got for me? I'm going to let you go first on this one. Hmm. Now, again, I haven't played any of them, but there's one that I researched for the show, being IG2G, and it got me so excited that every week on Amazon I checked the price on it, and it's still been hovering around 50 to like 45 bucks. As soon as it goes at least under 40 I'm going to be picking up Samurai Showdown. Because just the, the, the... If you heard me talk about it on IG2G, you know why... Like the, it's not fully Bushido Blade style, but the, the, the counters and the heavy attacks and actually having to strategize and plan your attacks as opposed to just rush in and do like the million billion hit combo that you just like program in like you're a computer man. Watching Samurai Showdown makes me happy. It looks fun. It looks cool. It looks strategic. I like that you got the heavy attack, the light attack, the kick. Everything about it excites me. I can't wait to play it. I will be awful at it. But it looks it looks cool. It sounds cool. It looks like it plays cool. It gets my vote just because I'm excited for it. So Samurai Showdown for me. Well, this is weird, man. This is weird because I was going to pick Samurai Showdown too. And I was like, no, nice. no way. Matt doesn't know any fighting games. He's crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to pick Samurai Showdown because I have tons of fond memories of this game. There used mm. to be a really cheap $3 theater way, way, way down like Saginaw highway that I used to go oh, yeah, to yeah. all the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they had Samurai Showdown in there. And I did nothing nice. but blow quarters after quarters after quarters on playing this game. I loved it to death. I begged for it and begged for it, you know, but never could get it at home console because, you know, basically never existed on anything I had as far as I was aware until much later. You say just Neo Geo and that's mm-hmm. way out of the price range of Yeah, it was, it was so, it was just too much. And then I think it, it didn't, didn't it come so, it, I don't know, I think it came to some console way later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but at that point I was out of fighting games completely. Cause as I also mentioned to you guys earlier, I have a low tolerance. I get angry really yeah. quick and, uh, fighting games trigger that like really fast. So unfortunately, mm-hmm. knowing my own limits, I had to quit playing them except for like Super Smash Bros. funky, fun, s- silly games. Even Smash Bros. really pisses me off sometimes. Mm-hmm. So. Eh, it's just a fault, you know. I I love those types of games, but I can't play them. Yeah. You know, ask any of my friends that have lived with me for an extended period; they'll always tell you the <laughs> stories of me playing fighting games. But Samurai Showdown, awesome game. I love the artwork of it. I love, like you said, the whole Bushido Blade type vibe you get from it. Great game. Mm-hmm. 
Hope it wins. It won't. Mortal Kombat 11 will take it. You know, that's the way it is. Say Mortal Kombat or Smash will take it, but Mm -hmm. I really want something I want to win to win. Exactly. So So we're sticking with it. And then we're going into another beautiful, beautiful genre of mine, which I feel like the Game Awards always screws up. Mm-hmm. Every year. And I think they screwed it up again this year, to be honest with you. Except for at least on this time around, I've played several of these games, so at least I can talk about it. That's mm-hmm. the best role-playing game. Mm-hmm. Once again, Matt, I'm going to throw it to you first because I went first for the last few times. So what do you got? Well, I haven't played any of these. I'm excited for Outer Worlds. I do want to play that, again, in a Samurai Showdown-type scenario. Once it gets under 40 bucks in a reliable fashion, I'm going to pick it up and play it. But one that I covered for IG2G again is Disco Elysium and the fact that everything you do in that game is story based. It's stat based. It's this, this whole like compendium of personas that your detective guy has in his head and you're using those personas to interact with the world and people are interacting with them. And like what people say affects what your personas will say and they can have conversations with each other. It's a hundred percent all story based. And so role-playing game you play the role of this crazy guy with all these personas in his head boom there you go that gets my vote just because it's it's unique it's 100 percent unique it sounds really interesting it's been getting amazing scores all the way across the board people are saying that they've never played anything like it before and it is 100 percent weird and strange and sort of creepy and that's all stuff that's up my alley so disco elysium gets my vote for best rpg what about you eric i will say real briefly once again i'm very disappointed there's so many RPGs that came out this year, and none of them are these games. Yeah. I don't feel like any of these games are actually RPGs in the classical sense of RPGs. Yeah. And that frustrates me. So I really think whoever's in charge of making these lists, I don't know if it's Jeff himself or mm. whatever, but I really think somebody needs to take a look at this because it, it just bothers me. There's so many categories in which you can throw some all these games into, and yeah, then you true. take the RPG slot and you give it to games that aren't even really RPGs. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's I, I I ran about it last year, so I, I digress. Whatever. Anyways, like I said, I've actually played several of these ones. For the the picks I do have, I'm gonna go with Monster Hunter World Iceborne mm-hmm. because I love Monster Hunter World. Gosh, bless that game is so great. In fact, last night I played it for about two and a half hours. It was nice. great. It was fun. I didn't mention it at the top of the show. That's probably one of the things I didn't mention. Whatever. I had a great time with it. It's challenging. It's difficult. Every single fight is just so ridiculous and meticulous. You gotta just plan it out. You cannot be stupid. You will die. There is no mercy given to people who are acting a fool in this game, and I love it. The, the, the graphics, the environments, the randomness, everything's fantastic. I hope this game goes on forever, and I hope there's always more DLCs to come. So I'm going to give it to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Sounds good, man. And now here is where I'm going to interject the bonus Uh-oh. one, because I don't know if it's on your list because it was at the bottom of mine and you haven't touched it yet. It's Fresh Indie Game presented by Subway. Maybe the Chic Hydro Man got into your list and booted this one out and he went, Subway, screw that. I'm the Chic Hydro Man. But Fresh Indie Game, before we get to Best Indie Game, here's this thing for Fresh Indie Game. And it's it's organized weird, like it's organized by the studio and not by the game. But I'm just going to say the studio and the game. We'll, bu- we'll buzz through it real quick and see if you got any thoughts on it. So the nominees are ZAUM for Disco Elysium, which I just mentioned. Nomada Studio for Grease, the very watercolor art yeah. style game. Uh, Dead Toast Entertainment for My Friend Pedro, where you're shooting dudes, you got a banana as a friend. Who doesn't love that? Mobius Digital for Outer Wilds, Mega Crit for Slay the Spire, and House House for the Untitled Goose Game. I'm not even letting you go first. House House, honk, 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 honk. Everybody loves a goose. When that came out, it was all over the place. You can't deny that is the freshest indie game. That is a crazy idea. People, It blew up. People loved it everywhere. It was on Twitter all over the place. Now, Press Y to Honk is the new Press F to Pay Respects. I saw I saw people like mod that into that Call of Duty game. It was like pl- press Y to honk in the funeral scene right there. I was like, that's great, that's awesome. The Untitled Goose game is the Fresh City game presented by Subway. What do you say, Eric? <laughs> oh my god, I gotta go with Pedro on this one. All right, just yeah, because okay. watching the gameplay of this stuff is ridiculous. Yeah. Some of the kills and the instances they've set up and how they mm. you know went ahead and got rid of eliminated the bad guys and moved forward are phenomenal and i'll sit there and i'll sit I'll just watch them like 
over and over again for like 10, yeah. 12 times going, oh my God, it's so cool. Not a game for me. Not something I want to play because I will never pull off these cool moves and I will just mm. die a million times to get aggravated and quit playing. But I appreciate the fact that the artistry and the beauty of it all is able to be made in tons and tons of little clips and videos of people's awesome kills and fun mm. little games. I got, I got to say, I agree. Goose Game, Untitled Goose Game has gotten so much hype and it's been such a, like a, it was like a, hot fire for a minute you know just took yeah. took everyone by storm it's gone dead, dead and disappeared now but for that minute it was mm. just wow everyone's talking about it well you're right matt i don't know why but that one had slipped away from the list that was here don't mm. know why it's a mystery to us all but back on track we've got best action adventure game and of course well, I will go here, and I will start off by saying this is a very, very tough genre. It was mm-hmm. I had to sit there and really think about it for a while, because I got a lot of great games in this little area that I like personally. But at the end of the day, I was like, hmm, hmm, Controller Borderlands 3. Mm-hmm. Oh, which one do I give it to? And which one do I give it to? And I'm going to tell you why. I gave it to Borderlands 3. Now, the reason I did that was, first off, Borderlands 3 is amazing, and it's an yeah. awesome game, and I love it, and I had a ton of fun playing it. I played it all the way through, well, twice now, and, of mm-hmm. course, will continue to play it, so I love it. But Control is fantastic. It's superb. Mm-hmm. I feel like everything in there was just meticulously put in to just elevate the story and elevate the mood and everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. The reason I didn't pick Control was because Control, spoiler alert, has a lot of different areas where it can shine. Uh, it is, wasn't, is no, it no. actually a spoiler alert? No, no, spoiler alert for like, you know, later on in our picks. Okay, okay, okay. It has other places where it's going to shine and come up at. Mm-hmm. And Borderlands had the two. And so I wanted to make sure I was repping Borderlands 3 where I could because it's a fantastic game that deserves recognition. So Borderlands 3 is my pick. What about you, Matt? I'm pretty much in the same boat with you in, well, I've played, I've played three of the games, Borderlands 3, Control, and Death Stranding. And while Death Stranding is definitely an adventure game, it's not really an action game. And while Control is an action game, I don't really think of it as an adventure because you're, you're contained in the yeah, thing. You're you go contained. to different areas, mm-hmm. it's, it's an adventure in the thing. But Borderlands 3, you're jet setting across the galaxy. You're doing all kinds of weird stuff. There's the fun vehicle set pieces with all the music behind you. That's an action adventure game. And plus, it's just fantastic and I love it. And I want to give Borderlands 3 some props because I didn't on something else. Best multiplayer game. Oh, that's I'm right. See? So it's got to get a chance to shine here in best action adventure game. And it's just, I mean, it's an easy pick. Cause like you said, it's a fantastic game. I mean, all three of them are great, mm-hmm. but Borderlands 3 is awesome. It doesn't need, it doesn't need excuses or justifications. It's the best action adventure game this year. Well, and then here's an, here's another weird one. You were mentioning action adventure. They have an actual best action game slot. So it's kind of weird that they're like, hey, best action adventure, best action. <laughs> so. Well, and, and I was, I was gonna, I was gonna defend it by saying, well, the action games, there's not much adventure in there. It's just mm-hmm. action. But then Metro Exodus is there and that's not like an action action game, like Call of Duty and stuff, right? It's kind of more. Mm, it, no, it's, it, it's pretty action, but it's survival it? okay. action. Well, it, so it's yeah, it's okay. weird because it, it, it's it's action, but it's just you got all the different elements of surviving and making sure you're doing this and that, or else you get murdered and a lot okay. less. I, mercy. I, guess, I guess mostly what I see in it is the hey, you got to go, and so you're like through the tunnels and doing the stuff, and not so much like action, action. Yeah, well, they've always got jump scares and things going on though. Yeah, yeah. While you're doing it, and it's funny you mentioned Metro Exodus because for me, hands down on this list. Metro Exodus gets my vote. This game was fantastic. I had never played any of the Metros. I'd heard good mm. things about them, but it was kind of one of those games that kept slipping under the radar for me. But I went ahead and got a hold of Gamefly for free for some odd reason or another, or a dollar, I don't mm. remember, it doesn't matter. And I was like, Metro Exodus, why the hell not? So I got it, and I played it, and I was hooked. Straight up just hooked. And I'm just nice. ah, playing through, playing through, playing through. <laughs> Couldn't stop. I cannot believe this game is so freaking underappreciated it is wonderful it is fantastic it's superb the story is great the action is great 
the scary moments, the, 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 all the little, the tense moments and the survival stuff that I was telling you about, all of it meshes mm-hmm. together really well to form a great game. I totally think it deserves a spot in this. I hope it gets some recognition because I feel it's just been completely overlooked and forgotten about and I'm st- just angry because I know Astral Chain is probably going to get it. But what do you think, Matt? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, speaking of overlooked and forgotten about, I keep forgetting that Astral Chain came out this year. Before it was coming out, I was going to get it because it's a Platinum game. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if they're good, bad, or indifferent. I got to support Platinum because they're one of my favorite developers. Boom, here it is. Like Before it came out, I was like, oh yeah, it's coming out. And then it came out and I went, whoosh. And then all the Borderlands 3 hype happened and I totally forgot all about it. So Astral Chain is going to get my vote just because it's a Platinum Games game. And it's the one that I've actually, well, I mean, I wanted to play Gears 5, but it's the one I'm actually interested in purchasing and putting in my game player that I can play right now and play in. So it gets my vote, but I haven't played any of them. So. Damn it, Matt. You got to, you know, we got to get a whole different game going, I guess, where we just talk about the best indies of the year because then you're going to (laughs) shine. That's right. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, anyways, here's another, here's another one where I know you haven't played anything. Hey, best uh, VR AR game, Matt. Hey, what do you think, buddy? What is there anything yeah, I, in here you've played or even know about? <laughs> I'm so down for this one that I deleted it from my list as well. <laughs> well I'm going to guess that Beat Saber's on there, right? Yeah, of course it is, Matt. Hell yeah, Beat Saber, baby. Woo! That's the one I knew would be on there, so it gets my vote. And since you said that, it's funny because I can totally tell you Beat Saber's probably going to win because that's the one any idiot off the freaking streets can tell you exists. Just as Matt mm. just said, I don't know anything about VR. Is Beat Saber <laughs> the game? Boom. Case in point, he literally just proved it. That yep. game's going to win. But the only reason I even brought this one up, because unlike, oh, just like Matt, I would have skipped it. We've told you we can't play these games. I don't have any clue. Trover mm. Saves the Universe. Yeah, it's only yeah. here. It has been getting some and I stuff. have watched that game play through. And I laughed and I laughed and I had a great time watching it get played through. And I know that sounds lame. Oh, why don't you play it and support them? Because I'm poor people. But I did watch it get played and I laughed mm. and I appreciated it. And they even make jokes about people just like me watching the game get played. So That's shut true. it. Shut it. I hope that <laughs> one wins, but I do agree. I think base, Beat Saber will take it at the end of the day. Heck yeah. All right. So best community support. Hmm, Matt, do you got anything for me? Oh, gosh, I know he doesn't because Matt doesn't play or care about any of these online games. So, you know that, what? That is 100%, that is 100% <laughs> true, but I'm going to, I'm going to dial this back into the ongoing game because it's, it's literally all the same games in that category too. Uh-huh. I'm going to say the fact that Rain, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is still alive and getting updates when it was such a failure out the, out of the gate, like years ago when it first came out. And then it had a big resurgence and I, you know, it's had some ups and downs. The fact that it's still here, it will always get my vote. Even if I've never played it, I've never gotten into it. We talked about it. It, it launched, it went pew, and then it came back and it's still here. It's still around. It's still getting seasons of updates, new operators, new ways to play. It's going to get my vote just like League of Legends will always get the esports vote. So Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. I know there's one game here that you play, Eric. So just just talk about it. I'll allow uh, it for these you, two categories, and that's it. No, Never again. listen, listen. That's the funny part. I'm not voting Destiny Two. I'm going Final oh, Fantasy God. 14 because Oof. I live vicariously through a fellow workmate who plays Final Fantasy 14. If you guys don't know, I love MMOs. I've played them my whole life. I've, but lately, mm-hmm. of course, time, children, etc. I can't do it. Final Fantasy XIV is just like you said with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Siege. Yeah. I bought it when it originally came out, and it was garbage. It was hot mm. garbage. It was so bad, they took the game down and scrapped it. They went, we yep. failed. It was We failed. We will do better. They remade the game and released it again, and it was amazing. It was fantastic. Mm. It was wonderful. Everyone got on board, was loving it, and since then... All I see are fantastic DLCs, updates, etc., new things, this and that, all sorts of um, alliances where they bring in other, you know, other games into Final Fantasy XIV mm-hmm. yep, and yep. crossovers. That's the word I was looking for. And I do nothing but be jealous and want to play. And I just sit there and talk to my workmate, going, "What happened to this? Oh, what's this? What's this character type like? Ah, oh, uh, 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 but I can't play it because I just don't have the time for it." Mm-hmm. So I'm going Final Fantasy XIV for basically the same reason. They went from crash and burn to a complete success story. 
being able to compete with World of Warcraft, being the only one ever really to compete with World of Warcraft. I know some will say EverQuest, but come on, give me a break. Not really. EverQuest is great, don't get me wrong, but didn't compete. This one's actually been around, sticking around. In fact, tons of people from World of Warcraft or playing that as well or went over to that as their alternate game because they got tired of World of Warcraft, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I didn't go with Destiny because you know what? Destiny pisses me off. So, but that's not for here. That's, that's a true. different show. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to move on to the best mobile game. I don't care about mobile, Matt. I don't care. Sorry. Yeah, I hate mobile games, but I'm just going to say, What the Golf? I mean, that's a cool title, so why not? What the Golf? All right. I'm going to go with you on that one. What the Golf? You know why? Because, once again, I heard it was not what it seems like. It's some kind of goofy, weird game that like manipulates what your thoughts are on the whole thing and does Ooh, some nice. weird, cool stuff. So I'll give it props for hearing that it's some wacky, fun little title that isn't what you think it is and kind of cool. has a lot of fun with it. But I'll never play it because people sitting on their phone staring at it make me mad. Can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. Best independent game. Hmm. Oh, for for me, it's tough. So I'm going to let you lead because, honestly, I got nothing here, really. <laughs> <laughs> for you, it's tough. For me, it's tougher. I want to play four out of the five games. And the, the one that's off the list, Outer Wilds, I just don't know enough about. I mean, I've heard you say good stuff about it. And people say uh -huh. it's awesome, but I haven't ever researched it. But Disco Elysium, researched it for the show, want to play it. Katana Zero, researched it for the show, want to play it. Untitled Goose Game, I am the goose. I, I honk all day. In in my real life, I just walk around and go honk. And people go, what's wrong with you? And I, I scurry away like a little mouse. Uh -huh. So and Babbitt is you. I've told I, you I about have, Babbitt is you. You should. I have a two it. for highlighted here. I have Goose Game and Bob and Babba is you. Goose Game because it's fun, silly, ridiculous nonsense, and I love that. It's a, a quick little short game. But when I saw Babbit is you, you talked about it for IG Two G. It was one of the ones we actually recorded together, and I went, "That sounds cool." I watched a video of it, and in thirty seconds, my mind was blown. Like, my head exploded, like the little mind-blow emoji. So you know what? That is going to get my vote, because I gave Goose the Untitled Goose Game some props with Fresh Indie Game. Bab is you, best independent game, just because that is it's amazing. I still need to download it for my Switch and play it, but my God, when I watched it, I couldn't believe what was happening in front of my face. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's I'm, in, I'm in the same boat. Like I said, I, I don't really have any personal experience with any of these titles, but the one I've watched, played a lot of, is the Baba Zhu. And mm -hmm. fantastic craziness, thinking outside the box, awesome. Yeah. I love that type of stuff because when you figure it out, you feel like you're a genius. You start mm -hmm. frizzing your hair up like you're Einstein, walking around like yep. you're some kind of awesome person. You're really not, but you feel like it, and that's all that really mm -hmm. matters. So it's definitely getting my vote in this time around. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, we're going to go with best ongoing game. I, I teased mine earlier, so I'm just going to make it real quick. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, because it continues to on go. What about you, Eric? We're going to get Destiny 2 in here. Because, ah, ah, yeah, you know what? I got to. Because as much as I love and hate that game, it's still here. 110 <laughs> yeah. years later, I'm still getting on the damn thing and playing it. <laughs> so as much as I complain about it, Something has to be keeping me playing it. Something has yeah. to keep drawing. Because you know me, if I didn't want to play it at all, I just wouldn't play it. It wouldn't happen. True. I don't care who's playing it. So there's something there. There's a magic to it. It's some kind of weird time, drug. <laughs> and every time I tell you, you need to stop playing it, Eric, you, you always like get that like side defensive, well, but... Once I get leveled up, then yeah, the dungeons will be, be really be fun. Great. It's, you know, it's, still, it's still good. Yeah. It's still good, man. <laughs> oh, never mind. I don't know. I don't know what I think. <laughs> I'm like that woman who can't decide if her husband's great or not. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's <laughs> <laughs> terrible. So Destiny 2 definitely does deserve some props. Whether or not I love it, hate it, I don't know. But I'm going to give it to it because I keep coming back. And I think mm. that means... Exactly what the best ongoing game means. It means yeah. no matter what, you keep coming back. It's the best ongoing game there. Boom, done. There you go, perfect. With a big old explosion, just like that, we're going on to games for impact, Matt. Shh. What you got, boy? Well, this this is one, I haven't played any of these, but there's one that I, I did research for the show, but it came out way before the IG2G episode. It's kind words here. And this one definitely should actually get some props because 
the whole basis of the game is you write up a letter with like what you're concerned about, like what problems you're having in your own real life, and you send it out via the game servers. And then your little character sits at a desk and he looks through the letters from other people who've done the same thing. And you're, the only goal of the game is you write a letter, send it out, and then you answer people's letters. Like there's like, oh man, you know, I lost my mom recently and I'm really not feeling it. And you write nice things to that, pe- to that person. And so they, they send their concern out and they get four or five or six or 20 letters back with just like encouraging words. And it's got like a nice, cool, chill, you know, soundtrack. So it's, it's just, and from what I've heard in reading all the steam reviews and reading up people's reviews on it, you would think this is something people would like totally misuse and it would be a bad experience. I've heard that's a hundred percent not the case. So kind words is, it's something I want to get just to see it and experience it and see, you know, see how it works. But as far as games for impact, what more is that? You put your concerns out in the world. People write nice things to you to make you feel better. You, you know, you you reach out and make a connection, even though you don't connect because you don't you don't see who it uh-huh. is. You don't exchange names or anything. But you put your concerns out into an unfeeling world, and you get awesome, reassuring, hopeful messages back. Boom! Kind words. Oh, that's so sweet, man. Gosh, bless. I know such a nice guy. Ah, oh, I like to see a solitude. Where everything's miserable and you're going around. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do pick Sea of Solitude. Uh, it's one I've covered on IG2G in the past. Mm-hmm. And I love the idea of you just confronting failures in your life and, and yep. huge issues that have changed you for the better or for the worse and just coming to terms with them. And of course, mm-hmm. in the game, you're going around in a little boat and you go to these little, uh, these bad spots and you're trying to cure them. And of course, these bad spots are like problems that have occurred or things you failed to do or whatever, just emotions that have really screwed you up in your life. I mm-hmm. like that concept. That's pretty cool because everybody has things that they reminisce about and they wish they'd said this or done that or treated this person differently, but they didn't. And you, mm-hmm. you know, in real life, you can't fix it. But in this, it kind of lets you confront it and realize what your mistake was and move past it and come to peace with it. And I appreciate that because there's been a billion instances in my life where I've had to do that exact thing. And so I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, cool, a fun game where you actually go through and do just that. It's pretty neat. And they do it in a nice artistic way, and it's a lot of fun. I I appreciate it. I hope it gets it. We'll see. Coming up next is Best Performance. I've played two of the games in here that also have two actors apiece, but I haven't, you know, I've played Death Stranding. I haven't gotten far enough in Death Stranding to meet Cliff, a.k.a. Mads Mikkelsen, yet. Norman Reedus so far hasn't developed a lot, so he doesn't get my vote, even though I do, you know, I like his performance. I like the character. Courtney Hope is Jesse Faden. She's pretty good. But, man, you can't not vote for Dr. Casper Darling from Control with this one. And the first time I saw that man on his little film strip telling me about some weird-ass thing in that weird-ass building, I was like, this is it. This is going to be the best thing. And it's already started to take a turn, like he's getting all scared, and they're like from the funky angles now. And he's he, he plays that awkward, goofy, and then it's starting to get like weird, weirded out and freaked out guy so well. Just just the man's face alone, even if his performance wasn't good enough, wasn't great, he has the look of this character, and then he he plays it so well. He voices it so well. Dr. Casper Darling from Control gets my vote. I'd see you nodding. I know you agree with me. Uh, you know, it's funny because there was no other choice here. I love the performances of everybody else here. The only one I'm unfamiliar with is Gears 5. That's the only one I can't really speak to, but I have watched uh, probably 14 hours worth of Death Stranding, so I've seen all these characters and all their mm-hmm. glory. It's been wonderful. Of course, I've played Platinum Control, etc. I have watched a ton of stuff on Outer Worlds. I know Ashley Birch from other games as well, but you are right. 100% Dr. Casper, darling. It's phenomenal. It is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You've seen some. And you ain't even got to the good bits yet. You ain't even yeah. got there. The stuff this man does is... <laughs> In fact, I want to shut this show down right now. I want to get control back on. I want to go to my <laughs> multimedia archives, and I want to pull uh-huh. him up and watch a bunch of his end game stuff because I laugh and I have the funnest time ever with those videos. It is crazy. It is awesome. 
he did fantastic. And don't get mm. me wrong, Courtney Hope did fantastic too. The way she was able to convey the emotions with the up close camera shots of her doing mm. like thinking in her head and stuff. Yeah. Out of this world, really cool. I thought that was well done. I've talked about it before, but definitely, Doctor Casper, darling, you're gonna win this for sure, buddy. Mm. Don't you worry. I promise. Yeah, I do got to give a shout out to Laura Bailey because she's the boss at Saints Row Four and she's awesome in everything she does. So if she wins it, props to her because she's a legend. But Doctor Casper, darling, 100. percent Exactly. And of course, we're on the subject of people talking, so let's get on the best audio design. So this one. I looked at it and I went, hmm, well, once again, I know a few of these games. I do love a lot of it, but I'm giving it to Control. Because mm-hmm. the music in that, the audio in that, when you're blowing things up, flying around, the hiss are doing their weird crap, and the... Yeah. <laughs> this whole game, to me, was a masterpiece. And the audio, without the audio, it wouldn't have been what it was. And I feel like the audio just brought me into it. Sure, there's a lot of spaces where it's empty and not much happening. It seems quiet, but it's when it's not quiet. And it's those moments when the, the music comes in and does something funky to you. That's when it gets like amazing. And, and I think it being quiet and then having those moments is the best. It's, it's fantastic. What, Matt? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take all those points that you just made. And say, that's why Death Stranded gets my vote. Because it's often quiet. You're walking around, you know, just footsteps on the grass. But then when it gets loud or when you're coming back from a mission and, you know, you're com- coming over the rise and Capital Not City is right there and the music swells or you get over that, you know, that beautiful vista and the music just comes up. And it's like, and I, I've, I've got chills right now thinking about it. I get chills in the game every time it happens. It's fantastic. And just when I hear BB coming out of my speaker and stuff's going crazy, there's the weird BT sound effects everywhere. I'm still not a hundred, you know, I'm not super far into it still because now I'm playing control, but just it's gorgeous. And the, the audio though, it's just anytime one of those songs kicks in, it's at the perfect moment at the perfect spot with the perfect visuals going on with it. It's awesome. So it's got to get my vote for best audio design. And see here, Matt, this is where you messed up because best score music is the next area and that's mm. where Death Stranding, I think, shines because the songs okay. and the music that come on for the different cutscenes and the environments, True. those are superb. And like you already just stated, I think they, they meld perfectly into the, the scenario and what you're doing and what's happening at that moment and really mm. just give you the emotions and the feelings that are happening. Even if you don't understand what the hell's going on, it mm-hmm. makes you seem like you're part of it, and that makes it even better. Because I'm like, I don't know what the hell this is, but I'm still like, oh, edge of my seat, like going, oh my god. And I think that's a lot to do with the music being perfect, pitch perfect with everything happening. So Death Stranding gets it for me there. Uh, you make a valid point, and you make me want to change my vote, but I already have it highlighted. <laughs> it's too late to apologize. <laughs> I highlighted Cadence of Hyrule. I haven't mm-hmm. played it myself. Watched a bunch of videos on it. I played Crypt of the Necro Dancer, which is the the spiritual prequel, mm. I guess, to it. What's well, based off of yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you know I love rhythm games. I love that bump in music. Now you put Zelda themes and Zelda sound effects in it too. You can't go wrong with that. Cadence of Hyrule gets my vote just because it's the only like bumping awesome. Like I would I would roll the soundtrack in my car driving around. Mm-hmm. That's why it gets it. I give you respect for that. I give you respect. It's all right. Bumping on along. <laughs> you see what I did there? Oh, nice. I like it. <laughs> going on to best narrative. Hey, everybody. Surprise. What do you think it's going to be? Control, suckers. Control. Because that game, I've said it already, but I'll say it again for this, built a world. It pulled a Stephen King on you here. It went ahead and took mm. everything that Remedy's done, and it's kind of been like, hey, ho, hey, Maybe this could be tied in here. Maybe this could be tied in here. What are we going to do here? I'm all, uh, I just fell in love. Instantly I went, okay, you've just tied in all your universes into this. And now mm. who knows where this is going to go and go anywhere. In fact, some of the DLCs I've already promised that we're going to see a tie in with Alan Wake. And I'm mm. like, oh my gosh. Plus, of course, if you've, you know, played the game platinum and gone crazy with it, you'll, you'll figure it all out and why that's important and what's going on. Mm-hmm. So just saying, 
the narrative, the story, it doesn't make sense. But if you start going through, reading the freaking files, watching those multimedias, of course, completing the story missions and figuring things out, it all creates this much larger picture and you realize it's part of a much larger universe. And then you're like, okay, I get it. I don't get it all at the end still. But I get enough to know we're going to move forward, and I want to move forward, which I think that's the perfect narrative, is making you want to read more. So there you go. Man, I, you, got, you got me wanting to change my vote on this one, too. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Because I voted for a game I haven't played, but it's a game that's all around narrative, and it's 100% story-driven. I, I put Disco Elysium on here, because that's what that game is. It's 100% narrative. So if it's not the best, well... I mean, everyone, every, every one of these other ones can have failings because it's not just narrative, just text and voices and discussions and back and forth and conversations and twisting, twisting the narrative of what you're presenting and what the facts really are. So that's why Disco Elysium gets my vote because it's, it's pure narrative in a really cool, unique and fun and exciting format. And so now we've covered sound. We've covered music. We've covered story. How about best art direction? Oh man, what you got for this one, sir? I don't even know because it ain't on this list. What art direction? Oh my god! <laughs> I wondered because it was it was right after music for me before narrative. So mm-hmm. what we have for best? So what we have for best art direction? In case y'all didn't know and stuff wasn't on your list, we got Control, we got Death Stranding, we got Grease, we got Sayonara Wild Hearts, we got Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and we got Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. I was torn between two on this. The two games I've played are both gorgeous and beautiful. Maybe Death Stranding should get it just because those goddamn hills and mountains are so freaking pretty. But I had to go with Grease, that watercolor game where you're, you know, the girl who's who's lost. I think it's her mother, but I'm not 100% sure. And you're restoring color to the world. That had to get my vote just because even just looking at it for IG2G, nothing, it's another one of those games where I say nothing else looks like this. So if I didn't at least vote for it here, I don't know what I'd be doing with my life. I almost voted for Link's Awakening because it's just so cool and cutesy and blah, blah, blah. But Grease gets my vote. What about you, Eric? Now, here's the 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 note. Yes, Link's Awakening. I love that remake. And spoiler, I got it for Christmas as well. So. Gee whiz, yeah. you guys get lots of games for yeah, Christmas, wow, man. I can't wait. Anyways, it's a beautiful game. I can't wait to play it. I agree. But I went with Control with this one. Again, mm-hmm. because every boss in this game, every weird area, I can picture in my head right now mm-hmm. every distinct it, and that tells you that it's not just a bunch of humdrum same old same old room after room after same old crap true these bosses and these environments the way they use the coloring and everything to kind of bring yeah. it out it's phenomenal it, it makes it feel otherworldly and weird and alien and like you're out of place god it's so damn good it's just so good i can't even tell you like when you go fight the anchor that fight, easy fight, but super cool and weird and out there. And then when you fight the refrigerator boss, whatever, yeah. I can't remember what he's Dude, called. Yeah, God, the, that the, was so the, weird. The, found, the founder? The or founder. The... Yeah, former founder or whatever. The former. That's the former, it. Yeah, we yeah. got it. We got there eventually. Holy crap. That's like just such a weird, out of this that, world that fight, you know? And, and it just, it's crazy. And the ashtray maze, oh my God. When you get there, Matt, it's going to change your life. It's going to nice. change your life forever. You'll never see anything the same again. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So definitely for me, art's got to go there. But there's definitely a lot of deserving categories, I mean, games in this category. So mm-hmm. I'd love to give them all props, but hey, there you go. There we go. With that, we're going in best game direction, Matt. We're steering this back onto the track to be the end of the night. Best game direction for me. I thought about it. I was like, man, you know, I should give it to Control again because I love Control so much. But I was like, no. <laughs> You know what? Best game direction I have to give to Resident Evil 2 because I played that game to death back in the day. All right? I played it to death. I loved Resident Evil. I was a crazy freaking fan person going nuts until they went to 4, which is a tragic, disgusting game, which ruined everything. I don't care what all you haters say. It ruined freaking Resident Evil, and I'll never forgive it. This is why we got a one star review, Eric. It's I don't. Of this. It's probably you're right. Probably you're right. But anyways, Resident Evil Two though, the remake is nuts. It's insane. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, they're just gonna up the graphics, you know, da 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 da, do this. Nope, completely different game, but the same game at the same time. 
I don't know what geniuses did this, how they went about it, but they went ahead and changed just slight things everywhere, tweaked all sorts of rooms, tweaked all sorts of known locations where you think you're going to know it's going to happen, but it didn't happen there. But you'll see like clues of what happened previously, what could have happened there. And then it's just, it's awesome the way they took this game that you knew and you loved, remade it to where you still are familiar with it and know it and love it. But you're not gonna be able to guess every spot that you went to in this one. So it's like, ah, oh, that that was cool because I didn't expect it at all and was super happy to see and be surprised with all the different, you know, crazy kills and and where the liquors appear instead of the first one. And then of course the introduction mm-hmm. of Mr. X this time around, which obviously wasn't there last time. And he's just following you all over the place. Great game, mm-hmm. fantastic. Well, th- this is what I had trouble with because what does game direction even mean but things that you said right there oh what kind of weird genius has made this game this game feels familiar but you have no idea where it's going you did or you know what, yeah. what new stuff is going to oh, come yeah. at you that's death straining for me because i know what weird genius made that game hideo kojima and if when i play it like the very basics of it not the hauling stuff back and forth not the likes not the, all the other weird stuff it feels like metal gear solid 5 again if it has that that good feel of movement of momentum of of motion but then there's all this weird shit everywhere and if you if you want to talk about a game being somebody's vision and him making it boom that's death stranding and hideo kojima he he directed it he made it weird every, every like everything in the credits is all his names all through it so i i got to give it to them just cuz that's if if you think of all these other games you think of big teams making them you know, companies and teams of devs. When you think of Death Stranding, you think of Hideo Kojima. He, he's a game director. He's like an auteur director. That's his game. Boom, there it is. That gets my vote. I don't really even know what game direction means, but when I think of that, that's what I think of. So, boom, there it goes. If I think of, like, movie directors, mm-hmm. who's the best movie director? Well, he's the best movie director for these games. Hey, I'll accept it, because interpretation is nine-tenths of the law. That's right. <laughs> uh, so we made it, everybody. We got here. We're at we the it. last one. Game of the year. And for this one, I will briefly go. Guess what? Control's up. Death Stranding's up. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate up. Resident Evil 2. Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice. And The Outer Worlds. All right. I went through here. This was a no-brainer for me. The only mm-hmm. one I'm sad about, okay, because Death Stranding, once again, I've watched, haven't played it, but I've watched tons and tons of hours on it. Smash Bros. I've played. Resident Evil 2 I've played. Sekiro don't, haven't played, but it was never going to be on that list because I hate those types of games now mm-hmm. after Demon Souls ruined my life. And uh, Outer Worlds is my only regret. I haven't yeah. played Outer Worlds, and I really want to, and I feel like I'm doing it in an in injustice here because I haven't got to mm-hmm. experience it and I hear good things about it. So, sorry, Outer Worlds, and the rest of you, you were great games, but Control is definitely my game of the year. Mm. If I platinum a game, it's because I love said game. I don't really care that much about trophies. I'm not like some crazy trophy hunter or trophy whore or whatever you want to call it. So if you see me take the time to go back and even ponder doing a the platinum for it, that means I love that game. And if I do the trophy for it, get the platinum, that means first off it was doable without being ridiculous and that I love the game. I got the platinum in it. It's awesome. I've talked about it at nauseum already in different categories. The way it went, the story, Jesse, all the side characters, the bosses, the rooms, the environments, the possibility for its future. This game has it all for me. The music, I freaking love the music. And of course, it just does nothing but bring back memories from Alan Wake, listening to all, all that in there mm-hmm. and all the little radios and they got all that in control and different rooms. There's a sound room where you get to actually listen to like two, two of them. In fact, where you get to listen to the whole song, just pounding in your eardrums, going nuts. Nice. Oh. And then once again, like I said, there's an event that takes place later that'll just change your world. This game will stay with me forever. I will do nothing but play its DLCs, play Control 2 if they ever make it. I hope it goes on forever. Control, nice. you get game of the year, hands down, easy peasy. <laughs> well, I'm in the same boat with you on The Outer Worlds because I feel like I'm doing it a disservice by not playing it right now, especially when it's 
this is it's like one big bump up and then unless it has DLCs everyone's going to eventually just forget about it even though it got great scores and everybody agrees it's a great game. I just wish I was on that train right now and I could be playing it, but there's too many other games to play like the twofer cuz I can't pick. Honestly, I'm not no. far enough along in in either game, either Control or Death Stranding to honestly pick. Everything you said about Control, I mean, I can echo. It's all it's it's awesome. I love it. But I, I think the the reason they both kind of tie is they both strike the same notes for me. They're both mysterious. I want to keep playing to figure out what's going on in these worlds. They're both beautiful and sound beautiful in their own ways. Like Death Stranding is realistically beautiful. Control is stylistically beautiful. They both have unique sound and weird sound design and cool things going on. But I think what what really seals it for me, you said trophies for you. If you get all the trophies, it shows that you really love the game. For me, it's the collectibles in both of these games. If I pick up a data chip or a little data thing and decode the stuff and find out more lore for Death Stranding, even if I get like 10 of them, I go in my my menu and look and then, oh, there's 10 new ones. Any other game, I'd go, "Ah, that's too many. If I had two, I'd do it, but 10, I'll get around to it someday. And then it just piles up forever Mm -hmm. every time i get a new piece of lore about the world in death stranding i am so excited to get it even if it's 10 at once i will sit there for 10 15 minutes and go through and learn the history of this weird destroyed blasted world and why are couriers so important what happened to the pre what happened to make this situation happen i'm not even going to spoil what i almost just spoiled right there Anytime I get a piece of news in this game or Control, any kind of pickup, any kind of story collectible at all, I'm all over it. I'm just digging my hands in. I can't wait to hear more, do more, find more, figure out more, try and solve stuff, have no questions answered anyway. I love both games. I love playing them. I'm just really sad that they're both out right now, or at least you know, both mm-hmm. in my hands in literally right space. now. But I, yep. I, I can't just eat up one and then eat up the other. I mean, I can't, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That I didn't eat up one in March and then eat up one mm. right now. They're, they're both fighting for my time and I want to play them both equally. So it's it's a twofer for me. If I had to give one an edge just to 100% pick, I'd say Death Stranding just because of the the absolute weirdness and just strange everything. Everything in that game is 100% weird and strange. And the gameplay is strange and the the whole design of it is weird. And that all just ticks all my boxes. And like I said, the very, very base, when I'm running around, it feels like Metal Gear Solid Five, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So if I, if I had to give one a slight edge, it'd be Death Stranding. But it's a twofer for me. Control or Death Stranding. You can't go wrong either way. No, you definitely can't. And I just want to state, for the record here, I love, I love how Hideo Kojima is so good at what he does and so good mm. at making crazy cool games that people want to play that nobody's pissed that Monster Energy Drink is like just the de facto numero uno in uh, your face the whole game. If EA or Activision did that, people true. would f- kill their families. They'd, they'd shoot up, up buildings. They'd go insane. But because Hideo <laughs> did it, no one's batting an eye, and we're just looking at Monster Energy drinks floating around in space in your face. You're drinking them. He's pounding back and doing a little dance. He loves every bit of drinking that whole Monster Energy can. In fact, water turns to Monster Energy. We don't even bother drinking water anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> that, and, I, and nobody no, cares. I, <laughs> I will say in response to that, when I first got in you know, the safe room and I looked to the side and there were six cans of Monster Energy with mm-hmm. one tipped over, I literally was standing there and went, not standing there, I was sitting on my couch and went, what the fuck? <laughs> and I zoomed in and I was like, is nope, it real? It's yeah, real. It is. That's Monster Energy. And then I went to my canteen to drink some water and it just said, Monster drink Energy. Monster Energy. And I went, maybe I have one. And then the canteen is after that. Drink <laughs> no. Monster Energy, walk through the water, canteen's full. Drink a Monster Energy. <sighs> okay. It's the best. It's the best. It, they transform, the canteen transforms water. <laughs> Uh, to monster energy. Now wait, like, pause, <laughs> pause. Because don't lie, Eric. Uh, if you could like turn on your tap at home, oh, what I put do your that? water yes, bottle under it was monster it. energy. 100%. You would be in heaven. Oh, I'd be so in heaven. this should be your this should be your game of the year because it realized the <laughs> life you want to live. That's what I want to do. I know. I exactly. get it. I just find it humorous. <laughs> I just love it. How the populace loves to pick and choose what they're going to go crazy about. And it just mm-hmm. tells you how awesome Hideo is at getting good games out there that people love and attach themselves to that they're willing to overlook crazy ass things like that. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just giving him props by pointing yeah. out something that normally would be just number one news lines for freaking weeks or, you know, yeah. stupidity and nothing. No way better than I. It's all good. So there you go. <laughs> it could be there in the game of the year because God bless. If you can have monster energy drinks and nobody cries. Wow. You did something great. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife could yell at you, stop drinking that monster. Well, I literally can't, babe. Look, turn on the tap. As soon as you like, put green. your hand close to it, monster energy. <laughs> what, what do you want? What am That's I stupid. To do? That's not real. She puts her hand in it. It's pink, monster energy. Yep. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I want to live in that world. Oh, get me a BB. Oh. No. Now, I'm the only one who gets the BB. Why did I pick it up for this? You know it's here. Yeah, I know it's here. You picked up the BB, size. everybody. But all right. Well, there you go. You have all of our votes for this year's Game Awards. We did it. We do it every year. We did it again this year. We hope we're right. <laughs> we're probably not going to be right in probably 80 90% of it. But you know what? Mm. In our heads and our hearts, we're right 100% of the time, all the time. And I'm going to make one last prediction. Uh this is this is the year the Chic Hydro Man reappears. He kicks down a door. He, he takes a Subway sub and rips it in half. He goes, fresh indie game. Screw you, Subway. I'm the Chic Hydro Man. And he flies off into the distance, shaving people's faces along the way. All right. And with your one prediction, I'm going to predict Dead Space Remake happening this year. Whew, we're getting it. It's happening. We've heard the rumors. This ain't This ain't just conjecture anymore, folks. This is real. EA said, we're really looking really hard at some of our stuff. And bringing it back and remastering a couple of the titles. Hmm. What one would they? What other? What? What other ones would they do? That, it just makes sense. Especially with Resident Evil Two remake being, being such so a big. good success, and Resident Evil Three being remade, it's mm-hmm. prime time for that to get a remaster, remake, or whatever you want to call it. I Man, think see, here I it is, so, folks. I got so excited for the awards. I forgot that they're going to have reveals and trailers. Yeah, all the and all trailers the cool and all the things. I know. It's just, it's crazy times, man. I can't wait to talk about yeah. everything that got revealed. I'm so stoked about it. Next week's episode is going to be that weird in between. So it's going to be yeah. like, we're going to be all waiting to get offline so we can go watch it. So it's going to be that weird, awkward episode where like last year, no, it was two years ago, Matt got really mad at me because he wanted to do the episode and I was trying to watch the show and I was like, mm-hmm. I can't pay attention to you, Matt. And yeah, it was fun. And then for two minutes, I turned to the side like this, too, and you went, hey, guy. And I went, oh, God, God damn it, yeah. it sucks. But no, it's not going to be that <laughs> no, because we're going we're gonna to change record it, it on year. Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> not missing out. I'm no. going to be part of the conversation on Twitter, exactly. damn it. Exactly. I'm going to be live on Twitter doing my live reacts like I did last year. It was great. Hell yeah. So, hey, that's our predictions for the Game Awards predictions even even past the awards right there bamity bamity boom so what are you guys looking forward to what are your picks what are your predictions none of you're going to send it to us but you know what have you know reach down grab grab a sack grab a pair show me that you got a pair and send your predictions to me right just address them to me matt via email at info at third shift dot me dm me at third shift me on twitter and find us on facebook under third shift mr What's oh man, I forgot his name. Bobby Thund- Bobby Enot. Bobby Enot, <laughs> find us again on Facebook, my man. Where you at? Uh you can find us over there. You can also find us over on the Patreon. We treat it just like a little old tip jar. You like what you hear, you like what we're doing. Consider heading over there, throwing us a buck, two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, thousand bucks, or maybe that coveted one million bucks, in which case we will open up a food line. We'll have a whole aisle dedicated to babies in jars, which Matt is currently holding up one of the prototypes for said thing. And he has the one of the cool bags that we're gonna have that allows you to have hot cold foods in it, whatever you want. We got all sorts of cool stuff. Maybe the soon to be patented cold cocks. Hey, if you want to know more about that, watch one of our previous episodes. All sorts of great things that could happen there. If you give us $1 million, we'd appreciate that. If you can't, if your money's tight, you got to do whatever Christmas is here. We understand. You can support us by heading on over there to the iTunes, giving us five-star ratings. Not that one-star rating like old Mr. Some (laughs) Random Guy did. You are a mean, mean, mean individual, you one-star guy. But all you guys and gals who've given us the five stars, the four stars, hey, you know what? We appreciate you. Keep on throwing them our way. Give us some love. And if you want to give us love in other ways, hey, maybe consider giving us thumbs up on the Facebook, going over to Twitch, giving us that Prime subscription, or just watching some of us play some video games when we're on streaming. That'd be great. Follow us. It'd be awesome. Anything you do just motivates us, keeps us knowing that there's somebody out there listening and having a good time while we're chatting in your ear. 
Absolutely. And of course, this podcast drops every Friday. So we'll be back in your rear holes on the 13th of December for our very next episode. And you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out. And we really do appreciate it. Indeed we do, and we appreciate those five-star ratings. Help us out, support us up, get us higher on that list. You know what you got to do, but if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I ain't going to threaten you today. Maybe that's why we got a one-star, because somebody said I'd challenge him to come at me. But you got to give me your name and address, and then I will come kill you. But if you don't, I can't do nothing about it. (laughs) So with that, there's nothing else to say, but... Don't forget, don't forget to say. Shut up and sit down.